everybody, this is Mark from AutoAid. Uh, today's case study or video is going to be on this 2015 Chrysler Town & Country with a complaint of uh, battery keeps going dead overnight. Um, apparently it takes about two days for the battery to go dead, it's not very long. So uh, it appears to have some kind of a parasitic draw. According to the uh, customer, the, uh, which is another garage, so we're doing this for another garage. According to the customer, the M12 fuse, if he pulls, pulls the M12 fuse, the draw goes away. Uh, and according to the customer, I haven't looked this up yet, but the M12 fuse powers up the radio and the amplifier in the rear of the vehicle. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to start by confirming that we do have a parasitic draw. And then from there, we're going to go in and see if we can't track it down, make sure that the M12 fuse is the only one that we're having trouble with, that there's not some other issues with this vehicle or other systems that aren't powered up as well. And then from there, we'll try and track it down to a, to a circuit or a component that's giving us trouble, and hopefully that'll be uh, the gist of our diagnostics. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start by uh, measuring to see if we do have a parasitic draw here. Now, I'm going to use an inductive amp clamp on this. Uh, this is one of the clamps that we have kicking around the shop. Uh, it's not the most accurate clamp in the world, but it should give us an idea if there's any kind of a, a draw, whether it's excessive or not. So I'm going to just zero this guy out. All right, so we're showing zero. Uh, clamp it around the battery cable. So I'm showing, according to this, about a 2.3 amp draw. I'm just going to go over and check and make sure that the draw is going through the fuse box. Uh, yeah, we see the same thing over in the fuse box. So we know our draw is uh, going into the fuse box, which means it should be going through one of the fuses. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch over and I'm going to use this thing called an amp hound. Um, most times we just do this with a DVOM or something like that, but in this case I'm going to use the amp pound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this thing up. So these are all mini fuses. Uh, set it at mini. Set it for um, 30 amp fuse. And the reason I'm setting it at 30 amps is because that's the one the uh, customer stated that is that he has to pull. So it's the M12 fuse. So the customer states that if he pulls the M12 fuse, it no longer uh, makes the battery go dead. So I'm just going to lock that in. And I'm going to check the uh, M12 fuse. Which is right here at a 30 amp. And we can see that it's drawn about 1.2 amps. So I'm just going to check a few more of these. So that guy's pulling current. Now I'm keeping track of which fuses the, these are so I can go back into the service manual and look up uh, what they have in common, which ones are drawing power. Oh, that guy's drawing power. Uh, there's my M12. Pretty much this whole row, except for that guy. So I've got uh, one, two, three fuses, plus this guy that are drawing amperage. I'm going to go and take a look at the service manual and find out just exactly uh, what's on those fuses. Now that we've had a chance to uh, test and see where the draws are, the next thing we're going to do is move into uh, some of the wiring diagrams here and take a look at the wiring diagrams. Now I'm using all data for this, um, direct hit, Mitchell on demand, all the rest of them will have these same diagrams. And we know from our testing that we've got problems on fuse M20, M11, M11, M12, and M10. On this diagram, I've got M11 which powers up the HVAC module. I've also got M12 here, which powers up the radio and the amplifier. Now I looked at the uh, individual wiring diagrams for the radio and the amplifier system on this vehicle. 
neither one of these modules has switched battery power. And, and what that means is the, these two modules are powered up all the time. They're turned on and off uh, with a data message coming in over a CAN bus. So I'm just going to take a look. So that's uh, M12 and uh, M11. We also see M10 over here, which is another one of the fuses that's drawing current. Uh, it also feeds the video system. Well, I'm just going to take a quick look over here. I've already got these wiring diagrams up at the uh, video system. <clears throat> And here we can see the video module. Uh, these are screens. And when we look at the video system as well, we find out that the video system has a single uh, power wire that's on all the time. That is the M10 fuse. We also see that uh, a CAN bus coming in here to a couple of these modules, which means uh, these modules are powered up all the time. They're turned on and off with a video message, which really means to me that there's no way I've got problems in all these different systems. Uh, I mean, that would be massive system failure in, in different areas of the vehicle. What I think is happening here is when this vehicle is being shut off, it's not powering down properly. So my next step in this diagnosis is to throw a scan tool on it and get a look at the network and uh, um, power management when we turn the vehicle on and off just to make sure everything's okay in, in that part of the system. So what I've done here, uh, as you can see, is I've basically let the vehicle shut down. I've got the key out of it. The key's over on the bench. And I do have my scan tool plugged down in there. You can kind of see the little LEDs on the dongle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to scan this vehicle while it's totally shut down to see if there's anything awake on this vehicle. Now hopefully I can do that with an all-module scan. And I'm just going to run over to the scan tool and do that now. So what I'm having the scan tool do here is read the VIN so it can uh, basically auto ID the vehicle. Obviously it didn't do that and I wouldn't expect it to be able to do that since the PCM um, should be shut down at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and manually enter this vehicle. So I've got a 2015 uh, town and country. And I'm just going to try an auto scan here to see what, what if anything is alive. Now it shouldn't come up with much. Theoretically everything should be shut down. And you can see here I get this lovely message that I'm unable to communicate with the control unit, which kind of tells me that uh, at least when I did my scan here, there's nothing online. I'm going to come out of here. I'm going to go into Diagnostics. I'm going to go into Control Unit. I want Body. And I'm just going to take a look at the Central Gateway module on this thing. Now it's giving me a message here that it can't communicate, so I'm going to throw the, uh, I'm going to put the key in it, turn it on. Okay. And you can see that we're now powered up. 
so we're basically in um, run position even though we haven't fired it up and what I want to do is I just want to go in and take a look at the um, power moding in the body control module or central gateway So what we're looking at here are the um, codes stored in the central gateway module. So we have an active code for loss communication with blind spot detection module, uh, battery low, loss communication with radio and a cooling fan one control circuit low. Those are all stored. Uh, what I think I'm going to do next is instead of um, uh, using the Autel here, I think I'm going to hook up my um, uh, Chrysler tool and do a network scan and an all code scan and see what we come up with uh, with the factory tool. So now that I've got the factory scan tool hooked up here, what you're looking at here is network topology. It's pretty obvious. We can see that we've got a couple of modules offline here. Uh, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see the um, right and left blind side monitors modules are offline um, and we have we have codes for one of those as well and if you kind of watch this closely you can see a couple of other modules which are on the same data network kind of winking in and out so it, it looks to me like I've got uh, some kind of a problem with the um, network but I've also got two modules that are uh, totally offline so I'm just going to go ahead and shut the vehicle off that's why everything went red I'm going to uh, turn it back on here in a, in a few minutes or, or turn it back on. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go in and do a scan for codes. And instead of doing a single module scan, I'm going to uh, scan all the modules. And you can see here um, we've got a bunch of different modules reporting in. Uh, we see a lot of uh, communication codes. In fact, they're, they're mostly communication codes. We've got some low battery codes. With, which are to be expected because the battery did go dead on this vehicle. Um, so what I'm going to do is, this is a lot of codes. Typically when I see something like this, I, I, I've been recording this screen, so I got a record of them. I always want to make a record of them. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear the codes and then go back and do another code scan on it. And from there, we'll take a look at uh, which codes come back. And then from there, we'll make some decisions as to what we're going to do. So you can see that I've cleared the codes. All the codes that are coming back now are active or current. And what I'm basically left with is a bunch of communication codes. Uh, with the blind spot monitors, we know they're offline, and I've got a bunch of CAN interior bus codes. So typically when, when you have uh, communication codes and non-communicating modules, especially when it's only two modules on a common bus, what I tend to do is go to those modules and see uh, what's going on with those modules, because a lot of times uh, a bad module can corrupt uh, bus messages, stuff like that. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go I'm going to crawl underneath this uh, vehicle. These uh, modules are underneath the back bumper. And we're just going to take them out of the system, and then we're going to go back in and see where we're at um, uh, with codes and that kind of stuff. And hopefully we can get rid of a bunch of these. So what I've done is I have disconnected the two rear blind spot monitors. I'm just going to go back in and clear the codes, see which codes come back. If the blind spot monitors are uh, causing my network issue, what should happen here is I will get codes for the blind spot monitors, but my uh, communication codes or my CAN bus codes should go away. And if they do, I'm then going to go and uh, recheck the car and see if that has allowed the car to power down correctly and whether that um, gets rid of the draw. And as you can see, my bus codes are gone, so it's now time to go and check this thing and see if our draw is gone. So now that we have the um, rear lane departure sensors disconnected, we went in and did our code scan. You can see there that we've got 
The only thing we've got codes for now is the modules that are unplugged. Uh, all of our key and bus communication codes are gone. When I check the current draw on the battery now, remember we were over 2 amps before. Uh, we're less than half an amp now, which is pretty good. A uh, little high, but it is coming down. And when I go in, and check the fuses that were drawing current before. See. So, no current on any of the fuses that were drawing current before, so Looks like this one wound up being a couple of bad blind spot monitors. And just for the heck of it, we took uh, one of them apart. The one that we could hear the uh, rattling in, I shook this one. I think this is the left side, doesn't really matter. But I took the, um, we basically pried the cover off it. And when we uh, opened it up, this is what we found. It's full of corrosion. You can see that the circuit board uh, is corroded. There is uh, some burn damage in the bottom left-hand corner. Kind of hard to see, but it's there. And when we smell this module, it has that burnt electrical smell to it. So this one's pretty much a slam dunk. A couple of rear blind spot monitors are what it's going to take to fix this. If you like this video, please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. And if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.